Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, we've got a full house again, which is always great to see. Can everybody hear me at the back without using another mic, yeah? Great. So welcome to, this is our fifth ecosystem event. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Lorna Green. I'm the commercial director with the Northwest Coast AHSN. The, most of you, I think, by now know about the academic health science networks, but given that this is quite a new theme for us, there may be some of you in the audience that, that haven't attended our events before. So just a very quick overview of, of what an AHSN is and what we, why we were formed. Northwest Coast is one of 15 AHSNs across NHS England. We're funded and licensed by NHS England. And we were established on the back of the government's innovation, health and wealth agenda. So we have three key areas of work. One is to um, improve the health and well-being of our population through our network and, and supporting and working in partnership across the region, but also tying into the other 14 AHSNs to spread good practice. So we learn from initiatives they've, they've implemented and they learn from our initiatives too, so we get better at spreading and disseminating good practice. To promote innovation in healthcare, the NHS is quite rightly quite risk averse at times, and it's our role to find ways to bring new innovations in, evaluate them, and then disseminate those that work. And also to create health and wealth in the region through um, improving access, for, particularly for SMEs, to engage and understand how to sell to the NHS but also to try and bring investment in the region. So we, we work a lot with companies and partners, academic and NHS, to support with bid writing, to try and bring uh, funding into the region to develop and launch uh, further innovation. So this is our region. Um, if you take the Northwest and you carve out Greater Manchester region, then that's what Northwest Coast is. So we cover uh, South Cumbria, Lancashire, Merseyside and Cheshire, and a population of 4.1 million. New for us this year is a programme related to alcohol and the reason for that was that while we were doing our business plan for this year and, and identifying our priorities, we talked to most of our commissioners and our partners and asked them what the, their real issues were. What is it that they thought we could support with and help with um, and what were they having um, real difficulties in addressing? And one of the ones that came out loud and clear from the majority of our CCGs was alcohol. So Julia Reynolds is our programme manager on this theme and you'll hear from Julia later today. Um, and the, the programme's been built around really trying to identify and segment so that we understand the problem across the region. <coughs> Looking at the proposed interventions, those that are starting to be used and those that are coming through that we could evaluate and, and trial. Obviously working in partnership, we're a small organisation of 15 people so we can't drive this change alone. We really depend on our partners on that network to, to implement the ideas and the changes as they come through. And working as you see today from the exhibition with those developing the innovations and new systems and programmes to help deal with the, the problem. And the real focus of the programmes, alcohol is obviously a, a, a huge area, um, but our real focus is to try and reduce alcohol related admissions. Um, and attendance as at A&E. So why alcohol? I probably don't need to tell most of you this, but the cost to England um, in relation to alcohol is around 20 billion a year, and that's probably quite conservative. That ties in workplace issues, police, law enforcement, um, and health provision. It's also linked to a wide range of health conditions, so liver disease, STDs, obesity, cancers, head and neck cancer in particular, hypertension, um, and wide-ranging harms and costs to the NHS and the wider society through alcohol abuse. Those costs are expected to rise, primarily because the number of people and episodes and attendances are rising. So I'll take you through a little bit of the headline data for our region, but then we'll, the, the speakers you'll get a lot more information from as the morning goes on. So this graph shows you alcohol primary or secondary causes of admission, hospital admissions um, by CCG region for the northwest coast. And it's admissions per 100,000 population. And you can see there, across the region, all our CCGs experience 2 to 3% of admissions in relation to alcohol. And the blue bars are 2013-14 compared to the green, which is 2012. 13. So you can see the majority of CCGs actually saw an increase in 13-14, so that does suggest that the problem is, is increasing across the region. 
In terms of the number of A&E attendances per CCG, um, Liverpool's coming out highest there, but you do have to bear in mind that Liverpool is the largest of the CCGs as well, so it is in relation to size of CCG, so we would expect to see more. So, but the, you know, it's an issue right across the whole region. It's not in just pockets. It's impacting on the whole region. And ju sorry, just going back to that, if you add them all up, that's around half a million admissions to A&E across the northwest coast in a year, which is quite a phenomenal amount of, of um, patients to deal with. In terms of the deaths, again, a similar pattern seen across the CCGs. These are deaths that are directly related to, to alcohol consumption. And if you add all of those up, that equates to around 1,700 deaths in our region every year from alcohol. So what are we trying to do about it? Um, we're looking at digital technologies. Digital is a, a key theme through all of our programs, um, including apps, mod, ma, um, modeling and, and mapping techniques, and screening tools to audit and really understand the, the scale of the problem and the nature of the problem. We're working with our stakeholders, including Public Health England and third sector organizations, and organizing events like today to bring partners together. And also looking at some of the innovative ways to try and tackle the problems um, across the region. So the agenda for today, we have a broad range of speakers. Um, first of all, Liz Ashton Payne, who is from the ECH Alliance. And then we'll go on to Professor Sir Ian Gilmore to talk about the work at the University of Liverpool around hospital-related admissions. Rachel Swindles from Public Health and Dave Rigby from NWAS are here to talk about their initiative around safe havens to reduce A&E attendances and admissions. We have Professor Mike Pearson from the University of Liverpool looking at areas around health inequalities and high hospital use in relation to alcohol. Ali Wheeler from Drinkwise looking at the initiatives and the innovative approaches that, that Drinkwise are taking to try and support people. Um, Simon Russell from Liverpool John Moores looking at how we can actually use A&E data strategically and intelligently to inform how we, we tackle the issues. And then we'll go to a roundtable discussion, and there, there are four themes for that, so there'll be two tables per theme um, for a discussion group on how we can develop approaches across the region in partnership to start to address um, ways that we might be able to reduce admissions. And then there'll be a break, and again, another opportunity to network and, and to view some of the, the exhibition stands and technologies. So without further ado, and getting on to the, the, the key speakers of today, I'd like to introduce Liz Ashill Payne. Thank you. 